nurseand.com podcast from the files of nurseand.com. We're going to be doing the audio book reading of the mental files by nurse Anne, which is published on Amazon and read here for free. And then we're going to have inspirational wellness and creative entertainment with a purpose. We're also going to pick apart the chapters of that series and relate it to our own inner thought struggles and relationship dramas. We're going to add biblical prescriptions and wisdom from scripture to help us navigate our life journey for the best life possible. So join along, ride along. We're going to jump into that series right now. Nurse Ann presents The Mental Files a fictional drama series. Get an inside look as the frontline workers try to rescue those in crisis, mental, physical, and spiritual. What role does God play in the outcome? What about their own relationship dramas? Check out this series on Amazon, The Mental Files by Nurse Anne. Book one is Sheep Among Wolves. Book two is Dr. John Doe. Book three is A Tent under the bridge book four is the trilogy edition the first three books and now just released is the next book in the series which is defenders of the week and then i left you a collection series edition which has all the books in one we're gonna get started I'm a certified emergency and mental health registered nurse for 28 years and still going. So I've created an inside look at the strong struggles and trauma and drama that we face in the emergency system and the mental health system and the frontline workers. There's nurses, caseworkers, police, paramedics, doctors, and so many more people that help out and even the family members. So let's go ahead and jump into book one of the mental files, Sheep Among Wolves by Nurse Anne out on Amazon if you want to just get the whole series. Then we're gonna pick it apart as it relates to your life. We're gonna have some word puzzles, some inspirational wellness, and those biblical prescriptions to help us on the life journey. So chapter one. The frightened young lady with the matted hair and dirty feet didn't know what to do when she saw the flashing blue lights. What's going on? Are they coming to arrest me? I didn't do anything wrong, she thought to herself. You know you're a bad girl, cried the frightening voice in her head. It had been a month since Julie ran away from the last boarding home the social worker had set up for her. Alone on the street, she was like a sheep among wolves. Just trying to find food each day was a major task, and the sickness she started feeling every morning didn't help much. Thankfully, she thought... My boyfriend, Carlos, really cares. I think he loves me. Where was Carlos, she wondered. She had met the smooth-talking stranger near the bus stop a few weeks ago. He had taken the pretty girl out to eat a few times, always with strings attached. Julie didn't know any better. Between the constant voices battling her every thought for a moment of sanity and the growling hunger in her stomach, she had confused the predator for an angel. Julie was all alone. Her mom was nowhere to be found. Even if she could find her somehow, the thought of going back to that old house where she saw her mom pass out every day was too much for the young mind to take in. The harrowing flashbacks sure didn't help in painful memories of her mom's party visitors who thought Julie was a toy for their pleasure. Well, at least I'm free now, she thought. I won't be bothered anymore. And she sure didn't like those medicines the doctor at the hospital had given her. They made her feel so funny, so she stopped taking them. That's when the frightening voices started to infect her mind every waking moment. It only made sense to Julie to get out of that boarding home. The voices told her that everyone there were demons. If she didn't get out of there, she would be their next victim. Not to mention that creepy guy at the boarding home that wouldn't stop sneaking into her room at night. So now, in the corner store parking lot with the blue light, flashing light shining in her face, she thought, It must be the demons coming back to get me. Julie ran and hid behind the dumpster located in the back parking lot at the corner market. Officer Leon 
and Julie's caseworker, Lita, from the mobile crisis team, had already seen the frightened young lady. They were dispatched to the scene after a call from the store cashier. He told the operator about a barefoot young lady who was talking crazy and begging for food. Approaching her slowly, they tried not to frighten her. Julie knew she was cornered. What did I do? She cried out. I didn't do anything. Why am I in trouble? Julie, we're just here to help you, replied her mental health caseworker as she tried to coax the confused young lady to the car for a ride to the emergency room. Who are you? How do you know my name? Why are you bothering me? Questioned the disheveled young lady. Julie, it's me, Lita, your caseworker, answered the mental health worker who was so relieved to finally find the young lady. Don't you remember? You see me every week during your outpatient mental health appointment, but I haven't seen you in over a month, Julie. What happened in the boarding home? You ran away. I'm worried about you, Julie. I just want to help you. I don't know who you are, yelled the frightened girl whose mind was being ravaged by the confusing hallucinations. Hey, how about if we go in the store and I'll, and I'll buy you a sandwich and chips, tried Officer Leon. Who is that man? screamed the young lady. Julie, he's okay. He's just giving us a ride. Why don't you come to the store? I know how much you love those chocolate chip cookies, encouraged the compassionate caseworker. Feeling hungry and overwhelmed, the timid and confused girl with the dirty clothes slowly began to come out of her corner, tempted by the offer of food. As the girl made her way toward the officer's car, the caseworker went into the store to get her the promised meal. Walking into the store, Lita whispered a prayer, thanking God that they had finally found the lost little lamb. She knew Julie was no match for the ravenous wolves waiting to prey on her out on the street. Trying to be as gentle as possible, the officer knew he had to follow procedure and put the handcuffs on the homeless schizophrenic before she tried to run like all the times before. The girl breaking down in tears didn't make his job any easier, but he knew it was for her safety until they could get her to the emergency room. Trying to give her a break, he placed the cuffs on the front of her so at least she could eat her food during the ride. Back in the car, the caseworker offered the frightened girl a tissue and helped unwrap her food. Between her frightened sobs, Julie gobbled down her food, something she hadn't had in a day or two. During her ordeal, she wondered where her supposed boyfriend she met at the bus stop was. The next chapter will be emergency room drama. Now we're gonna break apart chapter one as it relates to real life and get some insights, some biblical prescriptions for that. And let's go ahead and do that. But first, we're gonna spin the wheel to see which word puzzle we're going to land on. The first word puzzle and what the word puzzles are, they're interesting words and then they're linked and related to relevant scripture and insight for our own lives. So the first word puzzle related to this story is sentinel. And that has to do with being an advocate, a guardian, someone that watches over. So I hope that you have advocates in your own life and that you can also be an advocate. But the scripture for that comes from Psalm 82 reminds us to defend the cause of the weak and the fatherless and look out for the rights of the poor and the oppressed. So I hope that you have someone that you can help watch over and be an advocate and that that is also given back to you. I'm also reminded from this story, there's a lot of people, whether they're in a mental health crisis or the system, they could be homeless, maybe just a lot of trauma and abuse in their life. And it's hard to navigate through this world without people looking out for you, especially if you're out on the street or don't have a support system. And that leads me to think about trauma-informed care. Trauma-informed care, we learn about that in the healthcare system and other systems. And that is where we think about what people have been through, abuse, trauma, PTSD, just different situations that everyone in life have gone through. And we can show people compassion. I know sometimes people's behavior makes you want to be defensive or turn away from them or get defensive and angry back. But hopefully thinking about the trauma-informed care, we can remember to think about what others are going through and just kind of maybe listen and show some compassion. And hopefully that will return to us. And I was 
motivated and encouraged by an audio book on trauma-informed care. And the title is The Deepest Well, Healing the Long-Term Effects of Childhood Adversity by Nadine Burke Harris, MD. And she had started a clinic in San Francisco to help the community, especially young people. And they really relied heavily on the ACEs, the Adverse Childhood Experiences Questionnaire. They would interview and talk with the parents and the patients, see what kind of score they received on that. And came to find out, come to find out that your trauma history, your abuse in the past, your high score on that, even if you don't have other disease factors in your life as you get older, can actually cause disease and heart disease and other things just based on the pent up trauma that maybe hasn't been dealt with. So they developed a system in their clinic along with the trauma-informed care where they would make sure that they had advocates, people in the live support systems for the young people and their families. They encouraged them to get the proper amount of rest, a healthy diet, do meditation and prayer, and just different counseling sessions to help them in the trauma-informed care system. In studies from the CDC and other patients led to the understanding that those adverse childhood experiences like abuse, neglect, parental addiction or mental illness, even divorce, can have lasting effects on human health. So that's something interesting to look into, trauma-informed care, and that's a great book, The Deepest Well, by Nadine Burke Harris. And we will continue on the next podcast with Chapter 2. And if you want to get ahead of it, you can go to Amazon. Right now we have Kindle and Paperback for The Mental Files by Nurse Anne. Book one, as I said, is a sheep among wolves. You're going to look at a young lady that's fending for herself with thought disorders and going through the system and she's very afraid and see how the health if the health care workers can get through to her also there is relationship drama romance faith inspiration and a lot of danger she gets caught up in a lot of with some dangerous people on the street find out what happens to them and in book two is dr john doe you're going to meet someone with a memory disorder and see how he can fend for him and his family fend in the system and if they can get him some help there's more relationship drama there's more danger as the young man in the story tries to figure out how to make his life better and get ahead of the dangerous elements in his life and then book three is a tent under the bridge looking more at homelessness and mental health struggles and the workers trying to help those caught up in that and the relationship issues just keep getting bigger and see if they can have a great outcome and how that comes about. Also looks at Christian counseling and the church coming together and helping that homeless community. Book four is the trilogy edition, which has the first three books in one. And then the next book is Defenders of the Week. That really gets into people being bullying, bullying awareness, online bullying, people having creative passions but maybe not having enough confidence or worrying what others think. Meet that young lady as she goes through that system and gets in real despair over the bullies. And then she runs into other people going through similar situations, see how they can help each other. Also look at whether the church and the community, some of them don't appreciate what the ministry team is doing for that community because it's upending their comfortable country club lives and see how that resolves and how the relationships end up, whether the people caught up in the dangerous system can make something better of their life if their relationships will thrive. Check that all out on The Mental Falls by Nurse Anne on Amazon. And I hope you have a great read and I'll see you on the next podcast number two. So I will see you at the next nurseand.com podcast number two from the files of nurseand.com website. Have a great day. Have a great read. Advocate for yourself. Advocate for others.